Welcome, welcome. Made a few changes to the games room, which somehow has freed up a lot of room. But all I've done is literally move one thing and it seems to have created extra space. It's like I've done a bit of gaming games room Tetris. So basically I moved the, the two little cabaret arcade cabs behind me, you can see. Um, they were basically positioned. Um, you can't see it now, but they positioned the games room opposite ends of the games room. And they weren't getting much play or much love. Um, kind of just the way they were positioned out. I've had these cabinets for a little while now and I've had them in three different positions in this games room. I can't seem to work out where I want to put them. And everyone knows games rooms never finished, always constantly moving stuff. Um, so I basically, I had an idea because where I'm sitting right now behind me on this wall space was literally just like all the swaps and stuff that needs to be traded in, all like spares and stuff I hadn't quite sorted out. And um, I've, well, I've slowed down my buying this year and focusing on different things. I've cleared a lot of stuff, sold a lot of stuff on eBay and traded a lot in. But that whole elevation become free. Um, and then the corner desk in my in this room, I basically was using for my Game Gear stuff. So that has now become like the podcast station where I've joined as a co-host of the Unofficial Controller podcast. That's like a new weekly thing. So I need somewhere to be. So that's turned into that location. So it's kind of like, where's a Game Gear game going to go? So it kind of started from that. So all I did basically was move the two arcade cabs in the wall space behind me, rearrange the artwork. And I was like, they look loads better now. So now you can't see. I'll do a separate room tour maybe. I know we've done a couple in the past, but it's been a little while since we've had one. Um, but basically you walk in now and yeah, the, up the cabs are right on your right. There's a nice bit of space we can stand up or sit on one of the bar stalls and play them. And it's like one of the first things you see is, is you come in the room. And the room looks much bigger. It's more opened up. Um, and from doing that, it's created a space where the Frogger cab was. And it's a bit cramped when you walk in. There's two TVs. One's a CRT on the left and the big screen, which has got like the Wii and the Switch and stuff plugged into it. So I'm now able to shift those along. And there's a free space there. So... I can have a cabinet there for something else. So it's freed up and made a little display area. So I can, you know, put some sort of rack in for another system there, which is really, really handy. Because I'm going to get onto it in a minute in a pickup so of what the bloody latest thing is, <laughs> which I'm, um, I've dived down a rabbit hole on. And then, so I've done that. And then the other space, it fitted perfect to the millimetre. So where the Donkey Kong cab was, the Nintendo Switch stuff was in front of the radiator. And basically it's getting, the radiator is always off because a lot of computers in here, it keeps it warm, it's hot in the summer. But now it's getting winter, it's getting quite cold. Where I'm doing like two hour podcast recordings on like a Thursday night. Um, I need a bit of heating on here. So I thought I'd move the games away, turn the radiator back on. So I moved the switch stuff in the space of the Donkey Kong cab. And it fits, you can see for yourself, it fits perfectly between the other TV station in the corner and the like the, the valve and the, the pipe work basically for the stat, for the actual rad, it's like inch perfect. Um, so I fit it in that space, so brilliant. So I move the switch stuff over, and then behind the switch stuff, there's space in the windowsill, which I haven't been able to use. So now I've put all my Game Gear stuff on there, as you can see, so that's lovely and displayed. So I'm kind of um, really enjoying collecting loose Game Gear, uh, which I'll talk about again a bit more in a second. Um, so yeah, absolutely awesome. So basically smooth a few things around and basically arcade cabs in a better place. The switch stuff fits in better and it's not blocking the radiator. So now I've got heat. The desk's now free <laughs> for the podcast recordings and the Game Gear stuff's got its own designated space and I've got a free area. So literally just moving one thing around, shuffle everything. I've managed to, everything's in a better space and I've got more space. So the rest of the room is a bit junkyardy where I've got to sort things out so I won't pan the camera around but yeah I just took a couple of pictures and videos for you guys just so you could see so yeah absolutely over the moon for that to make a few changes um so in terms of the game gear which I've been loving and playing a lot of um I basically had one of my game gears it just sort of died on me uh, and I said it before so I sent it to Retro Saviour um Chris he's on eBay and he's on YouTube as well I'll put up his channel and his eBay page now, in case you want to check him out. He does like repairs and stuff and mods. And he's recapped a Game Gear for me before, put on a new screen, that sort of stuff. So I sent him a Game Gear and I said, look, um, you know, it's playing up. Can you have a look at it? And then when I went to do that, I realised the Game Gear I was playing on didn't have an upgraded screen. And when you're used to playing an upgraded screen, I was like, oh, I can't be doing this. I said, mate, I'm going to send you both. Um, please put an upgraded screen on it. So... He did that, so I was without both my Game Gears for a while. So while that happened, 
I basically become, and this has started a new collection for me, I basically become obsessed with Game Boy Color. So Game Boy games, I can't really get on. I don't think I have an original Game Boy anymore. I've got lots of original Game Boy games, but I don't like the, the green and black. I don't like it. But when you put original Game Boy games in the Game Boy Color, you do get a bit of color out of them. Um, and I'm not a massive fan of the Game Boy cardboard boxes. Um, and I'm quite thankful for and I'm also not a massive fan of the Game Gear cardboard boxes. I don't have too much nostalgia for it. I was very young and I remember enjoying the systems, but um, yeah, I'm not too bothered about the boxes, which is why I've gone mad collecting loose Game Gear. So over the moon with that, because I've got nice display little racks for it. It's easier, it's cheaper, a lot more affordable and easier to find. Um, but yeah, really enjoying the Game Boy Color. And uh, obviously I was a little bit older in my childhood when the color came out. So I've got a lot of nostalgia for the color. I love the color games and so I've, yeah, I've been really enjoying playing Game Boy Color games again, whether it's the black cartridge um, or the actual standalone clear, which have made just for the color. And yeah, we're really, really enjoying it. I've been digging out my old Game Boy games, playing even like Pokemon Yellow at night and stuff, um, and found new love for the Game Boy Color. But I love the Game Boy Color boxes, find them really nostalgic, love the artwork, love the way they look. So I've actually, there's gonna be some more pickups in the future. I've been bidding on eBay, buying them on Vinted, um, I've got stuff to trade in when I next go out to my local retro gaming shop. So I am going to start collecting boxed Game Boy Color games. I was actually in CEX today in Huntingdon in Bedford and there was a Game Boy Color game I wanted. One of the Rugrats ones, loose, but I was like, no, I want it boxed. And it was a box Wario Land one there. I was just trying to like slow myself down. It's really good condition as well. Didn't have the manual, but I'm not sure if I'm bothered about the manuals, to be honest with you. I tend to just damage them getting the game in and out. It's only good for reselling it, the manuals is complete. But how often do you resell stuff anyway? So I'm really not sure. But yeah, I've been absolutely loving um, this Game Boy Color. Absolutely loving it. Um, this is a light, so I think the screen's slightly smaller than the normal Game Boy Color I've got. But again, it's all modded screen and backlit, and it's really, really good. You're probably short. I saw from a short, a short, a short, a short that I've done. Get my words out. Uh, not too long ago, and you could see how good the screen is. So. Game Boy Colors are back. It's not a game in. I probably should have put a game in. I've took them all out now. Um, but yeah, I've got those back. And I'm hoping this one still works. It's got a blue screen on it now. I've just turned it off, which is worrying me. But yeah, I did a deal with one of my other Game Boy Colors and I swapped it with Chris um, for this, this orange shell one, which is really, really cool. Um, it's also got the battery mod, which is handy. When you're playing a lot of game gear, like this only lasts a few nights. You get like, so many hours out of it, like not even 10 hours, I don't think. It's like six AA batteries. So this is like one of those USB-C or B ports. So that's really cool. And also, which I'll show in a future video, this has actually got HDMI port. I'm not sure if it's, there was some issues with it, but I'm gonna test it out and let Chris know how it gets on. Um, but really I wanna give a big thank, thank you to Chris. He's sorted a lot of things for me, he's been very patient. But this Game Gear, it's been back and forth between us and it keeps playing up for me. But then like in transit, it seems to be working. It's like making it work and he sends it back and it doesn't work. It's like something's loose. And obviously he's in Wales, I'm in Essex. There's a lot of postage and waiting and stuff. And I'm a nightmare for texting back. Chris has been really patient. But when I'm at work, I sometimes see a message and forget to reply. Um, but basically I'll put some footage on the screen, some pictures. Um, I'm useless, I'm no engineer, but I, um, with Chris, well, basically video time Chris, Saturday morning, I think it was, he like FaceTime me or WhatsApp me, um, and I opened it up and basically he was the brain and the eyes and, the ha and I was just the hands, basically. I didn't know what was going on, I don't know what I was doing, but we was running different tests, I was poking different things, I did not have the right tools, I think I was using a Mrs. Hair clip, um, and I managed, and basically in the end, it was just one of the little belts, in there, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I basically pulled it out, put it back in again, and it worked. And I was over the moon when we got it working, so it's really, really cool. Sorry, it doesn't, it's no game in it right now, so I can't show how good the screens are. But I'll do a future video just showing some of the Game Gear stuff. I am going to do a separate video showing you after this pickup, showing you the um, just basically my Game Gear current collection and my Game Boy, Game Boy Color current collection. But I just want to say, um, massive thank you to Chris because he literally, I don't know what I've done, sort of thing. I've, banging my head against the wall. So the fact that on the phone, we're talking to each other, two different ends of the country, and he's managed to talk me into repairing a Game Gear is absolutely incredible. It's absolutely buzzing. I was like, yes, we've done it while we were on the phone. So that was absolutely awesome. Um, 
But yeah, just two two pickups. One I'm going to go and play straight away after this. So I'll show you the Game Boy Color one. I'll put some footage on of the um, the game on there for you. So I haven't even got out of the packaging yet. I just opened it to check it was the right thing. Um, I'm trying to just buy the games which I'm sort of interested in. First of all, I'm not going too crazy. Or just price. If it's very good priced. Um, so I'm visiting if I can get them a similar price so they trade in at. Then obviously I'm on for a winner. Or if the condition's really good and it's good value. I need to get some box protectors. So I'm going to try and go. I, just, I love the Game Boy Color boxes, but I'm not a big fan of the actual Game Boy boxes. I might end up changing my mind but in the future. But yeah, Buffy. <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like. It's 90s all over it, isn't it? Maybe a bit of early noughties. I don't know. Um, I don't know how dreadful that is, guys, but you've got to have a bit of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, haven't you? So, yeah, I've got that. I'll try it out. Um, but I need to ask you, please let me know in the comments. I don't know what to do with the display or shelf, whether with the Game Boy games, because, like, I've got a lot of loose Game Boy games which play in a bit of colour, in the Game Boy Colour, but I don't, I haven't got the boxes for them. I don't know how to display them, whether I just buy something for like my Game Gear, like Stan. So let me know, do you guys just have the cartridges just stacked or whatnot, put labels on them or chuck them in a box or a drawer? I really don't know. And in terms of the Game Boy Colour boxes, which I'm going to start collecting, these don't have like a spine where it's very recognisable what it is. I mean, that says Buffy on it, that's the only thing. So unless I have them all face on, and get a shelf, like a picture shelf, and put them face on. That's the only way of like displaying them nicely. But then I won't get a lot. I'm not going to be able to get a lot of uh, games there because it take up a lot of room, wouldn't it? So anyone out there who collects Game Boy um, games, box and loose, just let me know how you're storing them in your, you know, because I really don't know how to do it. To be honest, the book looks cool and made cute little things. Um, but yeah, inserts in there, games in there, rattling around. Um, even when people think they're not working, you give them a little clean and they work. So I'm never too bothered. Um, there's not much risk in there with that. But yeah, let me know, guys, how you're storing your Game Boy Color games. Well, Game Boy games in general, like loose and box. I really don't know how to go about it yet, to be honest. Just as if I've made space, I'm probably end up losing it. There's the next game. I'm going to play this now, actually, because the missus has gone out. Um, oh, flashing the address again. So I literally opened it just to see. It's a limited run game. I know I slag them off so much because it annoys me. I've worked something out now. But it's me being stupid. You can log on your account and you can see when the games are coming. So there is actually a lot. I've not had a game from a limited run for about six months. And the orders were like six to 12 months ago. But um, to be fair, they do say when they're coming out. I know I'm waiting for Clock Tower. There's a Rugrats game that's coming out. Um, but yeah, this one came in the week. Lollipop Chainsaw. Now, to be honest with you, on the Switch, it doesn't look that good. Um, well, it doesn't look that good. I, there's no difference between this and the original one. So like, I had this on a 360 or I rented it. I, I got stuck. I actually really enjoyed the game for what it is. Like tongue in cheek, good bit of comedy, little action game. It's a laugh, isn't it? For what it is, it, I quite enjoyed it. A little slasher, um, like zombie slasher. But I remember getting stuck. It was like in a gym, there was a boss. I got really stuck on it. But I really enjoyed playing the game, but I just couldn't be bothered to learn or be patient to work out how to get past it. So when I heard they was dropping the game again, I was like, I want that. Um, and that game became a bit collectible, didn't it? On the PS3, I think, more than the 360. It, was worth a, it went up a little bit in price, you know. I say up in price to what it was, you know, from picking it up for a pound at a charity shop or a boot sale. It went back up to its original price, like 30, 40 quid. Don't know how much it is now. Whether this makes the value go up or down, no idea. Yeah, the remaster doesn't really look remastered, to be honest. The frame rate, I watched it. It was a switch-up video. And they were just saying it didn't look too great the way it was running, to be honest with you. A bit janky. Um, this has been out on da download for quite a while, I think, now, about a month or so. Um, but I knew I had it physical coming, so I thought I'd wait for it. Uh, I'm not going to keep it sealed or any of that nonsense. So I am going to open it and play it. But it was a game I was a fan of, so I have got the original for PS3 and 360, I believe. Um, but yeah, like I said, I haven't completed it. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't know the game, the footage is on the screen. Yeah, so let us know what I think. But yeah, just a quick little games room update for you. A couple of pickups come through the door. I'm going to do a video just on my current Game Gear collection and my current Game Boy collection. Um, and in the future, you're going to see a lot of Game Boy Color games coming in boxed and some loose Game Gear games as well. Um, but yeah, just please let me know how you guys are displaying your Game Boy games because I've really got no idea how to do it. 
And yeah, just big thanks to Chris, Retro Saviour, mate, for being so patient with me, mate, and um, for helping us sort of to fix it remotely. I'm still flabbergasted. Well impressed with that, mate. So yeah, thank you to you. Anyway, I hope you all had a good weekend and have a good week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, Mario. And I am the hedgehog. And today, with this... <laughs>